The topic today is Twin Mega Scandals, the end of rule of law. It's very interesting, but I'm a bit puzzled by this, this title. The title, there is, I'd like to share with you the Arabic uh, idioms. I read in Arabic, Fakidu la yu'ti. Eh? If you don't possess anything, you don't lose anything. In order to end the rule of law, we must have rule of law. The question is, in the first place, whether in Malaysia we have rule of law. If, you, if the answer is no, if you don't have a rule of law, how are you going to say that we, it is an end of rule of law? It is beyond <laughs> logic. But maybe to appease some quarters, we may say, we may concede that there is a rule of law, but you can only find in legal textbooks, not in reality. I believe that if in this beloved, our beloved country, there is a rule of law, we would have not reached this level where there is a greater scandal, there's a problem of this magnitude, and yet nobody has been prosecuted by the Attorney General for committing crimes of this magnitude. Only if we have rule of law, this kind of problem would have not existed in the first place. Am I right? Recently, I went to South Korea. So while traveling in the flight, I managed to watch a movie, a new release movie, a Hollywood movie, entitled Crisis is Our Brand. It's, this film featured Sandra Bullock. I don't know whether I, I mentioned it correctly or not. She, in that film, she assumed the role of campaign manager. The film highlighted about the presidential election in Bolivia. So they were trying to find what is the brand to share with the public. So Sandra Bullock offered the tagline, Crisis is our brand. So in Malaysia, in the next election, we must have tagline. We may prefer this tagline, 2.6 billion and 1 NDB is our brand. <laughs> our brand. Actually, I really, I just cannot imagine. We have attorney general, we have courts of law, yet there is no culprit has been arrested, has been arrested, let alone charged in court of law for committing crimes involving 2.6 billion and one NDB scandals. It's beyond our imagination. Recently I read somewhere that Sarawak report claim that there were 37 charges have been preferred against Najib Tun Razak. But of course, as usual, there was denial. But in Malaysia, we must understand if there is denial from the government, it means the news is true. <laughs> it's so simple. You remember initially when this news came out, the Washington Post, or the 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 Os, was uh, the the was the general reveal that the money was deposited to personal account of Prime Minister. Initially, there was a denial, but later he admitted, he conceded. So by conceding that the money was deposited to his private account, that alone revealed that there was a crime committed by Prime Minister. It's so simple. Recently, our Attorney General gave justification why there was 
No need to prosecute Prime Minister Najib Tun Razak. He said he has written the money. <laughs> so by returning the money, by returning the money to the original donor, he escaped liability. There is no crime anymore. I thought as a lawyer, I think COVID also can share with me. By returning the money, it reaffirmed that you have committed a crime. You don't simply don't you don't simply return the money if the money is legal. You by returning the money, you know that you have committed a crime. You know that you have possessed an illegal money. That's why you want to return. Yet he didn't return all. <laughs> This is a bit, you know, awkward because in Malaysia, the Attorney General in the, our in our constitutional framework, he plays dual role. In constitution, he is the advisor of the government, i.e., the Prime Minister. At the same time, he also represents the government in free freeing criminal charges against anybody. So there's always conflict there. How are we supposed to believe that the advisor of Prime Minister going to charge Prime Minister? That's beyond. <laughs> I think beyond. We do. We don't expect that going to happen. So the 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 the, the crime is very clear. If you read Section 23 of the. Uh, prevention of what do you call it uh, corruptions act it is clearly stated therein that if you receive if any public official receive any money whatever amounts even you receive one ringgit so long you are a public official you receive money there is what you call it a presumption that money is considered as corrupt money. So the law is very clear. The question is, even the law is clear, why is not clear to us why there is no prosecution until now? And then, you know, our present AG, when people ask him, can you share with us to whom the money was written? Who gave the money? Who's the donor? He said, Malaysians have no rights to know. There's no right to know in our constitution. No right to know in the constitution. I wrote an article in Malaysia Kini. Sorry, Mr. A.G. Gender, there is right to know in the constitution. You cannot find the phrase right to know in the Constitution. Yes, that one I agree. Neither you can find the right to discern, the right to write in the Constitution. If you read the Constitution, you cannot find, you cannot trace any phrase saying that the right to dissent. No. There's no right to write in the Constitution. All these rights are encapsulated in the right to public speech, to pub, to, 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 to uh, what do you call it, freedom of speech. Because the right to know precedes the right to speak. In fact, it creates the right to speak. That's why, instead of amending the Official Secret Act, he should, as the advisor of the government, advise the government to introduce Freedom of Information Act. Now he wants to punish Rafizi, Rafi, uh, what do you call it, uh, Tony Pua by, you know, in, by introducing a new amendment to already draconian law. So the government is busy of thinking and, you know, acting in amending the draconian law. I've been in parliament for the last two years. I've seen so many laws have been amended, introduced simply because to silent all of us.
We have Pota, we have Sosma, we have Poka. You name it. You have you don't have Rosma. Maybe. In Malaysia everything is possible. If you really, you know, quite hentam Rosma, they may be a Rosma egg. In future we don't know. So you you amended the Sedition Act. Now you want to amend the Official Secret Act. All these exercises are meant to silence us. You claim that we are a democratic country. If you really want to avoid leakage, you want to avoid WikiLeaks epidemics. I call it. You must trust the people. If people want to know, share with them the, the knowledge. Share with them the, the information. Why are you so afraid with the people? People want to know if you want to create one NDB really to, you know, to, to, to spur the growth of the economy, to help the people. Okay, whatever information, please share with us. We want to know. Share with us who is the donor. We want to know. We want also to be friends with them. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> Just imagine if Rafizi received 2.6 billion by Arab friends, or Tony Poa received 2.6 billion from Chinese friends. I believe if he received today, yesterday he was prosecuted. So speak. So, they have speed. They have speed. So, so speed. Just imagine. Now we have how many months already? How many? Almost, 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 almost a year. Eh? It was revealed by Wall Street Journal until now we don't know the identity of the donor. This is simple fact, simple fact that we need to know. Just tell us who is the donor. It's simple questions. But if you ask in parliament, please reveal who is the donor. The answer is it is governed by the Official Secret Act. <laughs> We cannot share with you. Oh, time. You ask us to discuss this <laughs> problem, 2.6 billion, uh, in a short time. Uh, but it's okay. We, 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 have, we have heard so many passengers now sharing with us. So uh, I believe that in Malaysia, there is no rule of law. What we have, neither, what we have in Malaysia, no? There is neither rule nor law. <laughs> so I hope we can, we must act now. We must, you know, uh, what do you call it? Uh, try to disseminate this information. I'm a bit uh, happy because so many crowds, come, so many people coming here tonight. But I'm a bit also afraid. Because all of you are maybe belong to this, you know, urban population who are really, you know, want to know about these problems. You want, you want to exercise the right to know, your rights to know. But if you go to the kampung, you go to the, you know, felda, they just don't care. For them, whatever happened, 2.6 million, 1 MDB, MKN, Majlis Selamatan Negara. I remember when I say MKN, some people, some come forward say, YB, ini makan ke? Short, short of makan MKN. So, they, they don't care, you know. So, we must, you know, try to find ways how to disseminate all this information to the people in Malaysia as a whole, so that with this crisis, I believe, it is high time for the government to step down and it be replaced by a new government. Thank you very much.